Well, guys, I wish that I could say that uh, I've been worrying about our rivers for all of my life, but I haven't. I grew up fishing these rivers uh, with my grandfather, and, you know, I thought that stuff just flowed forever. I, I didn't understand there was ever going to be a problem uh, with the rivers that I fish on. It so happens in 2008 we had a drought, and uh, they started talking about damming up one of my favorite fishing rivers, the Flint. And I got a call from a group of guys uh, that said, you know, we know you love to fish these rivers. You're one of the biggest guys out there fishing these rivers. We need your help. And so we all met down in Perry and decided that we needed a Flint River Keeper. So we started talking about that organization. Um, and as it happens, you guys probably didn't notice this, but in the picture of Jimmy Carter, I was standing behind him holding a big yellow ocean kayak. I presented that uh, kayak to the Flint River Keepers that night. Uh, President Carter accepted on behalf of them, and I think Gordon's paddling that thing around our rivers now. Uh, but what is important to me about fishing these rivers and keeping these rivers flowing is we have fish that live in these rivers that can't live in downed up water. And in fact, until a couple of years ago, Georgia held the world record for the largemouth bass. It was now, the largemouth was imported over to, into Japan and some guy over in Japan caught one out of a little bitty pond about as big as this room and they now hold the world record. We lost it. But we have another record that I have made it my passion to promote. Actually, Gordon put this little thing in my head uh, before he was ever a river keeper back when uh, I, I met, met him at, a, at an event down in Perry. But there are eight black bass species in the world. It's the largemouth bass, the smallmouth, the uh, two-spotted bass, the Kentucky and the Alabama spot. There is the shoal bass, the red eye, the swanee bass, and the, uh, uh, bar, uh, the uh, help me out here. Uh, <laughs> Guadalupe. Guadalupe, that's what it is. The, it's the one in Texas that we don't have. We have seven of the eight black bass species in Georgia. We are the only state that has that many. We only have those because of the rivers. The shoal bass and the swanee bass can't live in downed up rivers. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Steve Sammons, is a biologist in Auburn, and they just finished some research on the uh, shoal bass in the Flint River and also in the Old Mulligan. And they have determined what my grandfather told me a long time ago. We would go fishing in the spring and catch these huge shoals, and then they would be gone during the summer. We couldn't catch them all the rest of the summer. My grandfather used to say, well, they're kind of like those salmons out there they got in uh, the west. They swim up the river to spawn in the shoals and then they go back down south uh, where the water is deeper. Well, I didn't believe that. Nobody really believed that. We didn't have any studies to prove that. We now know we, they actually tracked shoal bass swimming over 130 miles up the river from where they go during the summer and they and winter down there and then they come back all the way up to the shoals uh, to spawn later in the spring. So, And they have to have the water to get up. Some of those shoals that we have in the middle Georgia area are very rocky and, and a, a pretty high drop. So you have to have that water flow in the spring for those fish to get all the way back up to where they go. So what's important to me Aside from the water that we all drink, I'm just a little redneck guy down there and where I live in middle Georgia, I get all my water out of a well. I don't get water out of the rivers. That wasn't important to me. But this hit home to me when they started talking again in 2008 about damming up our rivers. And uh, President Carter has promised that he would help us, you know, do whatever we can. We've now got Gordon doing a great job on, on the river and all of the other river keepers. So this has made me aware of the reasons why we need to protect these rivers 
And honestly, I was selfish, you know, for a while. I was just thinking about me, as Gordon alluded, uh, alluded to earlier. You know, I was just thinking about me. I didn't really care about everybody else. All I wanted was me to be able to catch fish. And a, another part that this has brought out for me is I started a, a little part-time guide service. And it's not about making money for me. What it's about is introducing people to our rivers because Gordon impressed upon me that if these people don't get on our rivers, we talked about this earlier today, if we don't get these young people and all people onto our rivers and get them experiencing what our rivers are, they won't understand it like I didn't. They won't understand when it comes time to help save these rivers, so they won't care. They won't call their legislators or anybody. They won't support the river keepers or anything like that because they won't understand the importance of it. So for me, I started my guide service really to get people onto the rivers and show them these uh, the beautiful rivers and the fish that, that live in those rivers. And uh, it, it, it really is amazing. When I take somebody down that river in a kayak and they catch those fish, they, they go and buy a kayak. I mean, you got, you, once you do this, you've got to do it again. So uh, it, it really is, uh, has been a turnaround in my life, only just since 2008, that I understand the importance of protecting these rivers. So I know all you guys are here for that reason. I can't tell you uh, how glad I am now to be a part of this and how glad I am that you all showed up and supported this. And uh, I'm ashamed to say that I wasn't, but I now am, and I'm spreading the word, so thank you.